Egypt transition to democracy does not seem to be going on track right now. The reason for that is that, first of all, to begin with, when the revolution happened, it did not have democracy as its main goal, but a means to achieve the main objectives that people needed to, to see in, in as, uh, the, what the Egyptian people were aspiring to, which is mainly, I mean, can be summarized in, in the three demands that, or the slogan that the revolution had, which is like bread, social justice, and freedom. So the idea is that those three, three demands have not been tackled by the government or the transitional, transitional government so far. Um, we had several challenges in Egypt before. An issue of security, an issue of the economy, an issue of equality, an issue of minority rights, and voice. I mean, voice that being manifested in the uh, uh, expression, uh, freedom of expression through media, freedom of association, uh, and all other s civic rights. All these have not been, there was no progress in any of, of these areas. After the toppling of the Mubarak regime, there was like high level of optimism and euphoria about like the revolution and, and uh, optimism of what it can achieve. I mean, a year and a half down the line, there is like big disappointment with with many of the people, even with those who are supporting the revolution. And it appears on the surface, for for many, unfortunately that things were more functional, or the government was more functional at the time of Mubarak than it is now. So all what they see as a product of the revolution now, that the economy is going down, stock market is declining, um, there are like the basic services like electricity, the gas, the water are not reaching several people. There are like electricity cuts every day now in Egypt. There are clashes erupting everywhere, so the death toll is increasing. So they are seeing all the negative sides of the revolution. So how come was it better at the time of, of Mubarak? Was it really better? It was a corrupt system, but it was a system. That's the thing. But this system was, sh it was shaken by the revolution, but first of all, it was not totally dismantled and it was not, it was not replaced by another institutionally functional system or, 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 a, or a, f a system that is based on institutions. So what happened at the time of Mubarak, it was everything was functional in an impunitive uh, fashion. Everyone knew who they needed to pay off in order to be granted a safe heaven. And, but, but right now, I mean, people are not really sure who they should pay. I always like to um, give the example of the traffic lights. I mean, like people during, I mean, like, in the everyday chaotic traffic of, of, of Egypt. It was very functional at the beginning because everyone knew how much and who they should pay in order to park in the wrong spot or, or just to pass the traffic line. Now there are no I mean, specific person who's responsible for that. So you see, I mean, this organized chaos is not organized anymore and it's like everything is in chaos. So if you can apply this and how everything is functioning in terms of the economy and the security and all the other files that are like that the Egyptians are now suffering from uh, the the upper middle class or, or the or the middle class may have had the reserve to make them like survive the shocks of the decline of the economy but the people who are suffering more are the lower classes of the society who did not have this bed to fall back on when things went went really bad. That's why there's a very, uh, you, you'd find like um, mainly the resentment coming from people who's like the taxi drivers or the people who work on like daily wages and do not have like stable jobs. Uh, these are the people who are more uh, angry at, at, at what's happening and resentful. But the problem is not with the revolution, but the problem is with the people who took over the transitional period and did not really work on solving the roots of the problems by having cosmetic changes and changing individuals and, and, and personalities rather than reforming the institutions themselves. So th what happened is that instead of going by the book of 
following the framework of transitional justice, which entails institutional reform, uh, fact-finding commissions, reconciliation of the victims of the, of the past regime, none of these have actually happened in a functional way. And instead, people, because the problems were re really huge and, and, and deeply rooted and, and embedded, it was easier for those who are taking power or trying to reach power is to play on the populist sentiments of the people. I mean, and this, yes, can, can win people seats in, in the parliament, can grant them a, a, a seat in, in government, but will not sustain them for a long time because people need to have bread on their table, and that's not happening. The people in Egypt understood that their, the whole regime was corrupt. And I don't think that there was anyone under the naive impression that when Mubarak falls down, everything was going to be corrected and things will be every, the, the government will be reformed in a way that we're going to be returned into a democratic country overnight or even in a year or two. But there are always people read into indications. I mean, you need to see that at least we're going into the right track. That yes, today the education is not going to be better. The health services are not going to be better. But there are like steps that, solid steps that shows that in three years' time or five years' time we're going to get there. But what's happening is the total opposite. I mean, the services that were there and functional are not there anymore. The security that people enjoyed before is not th were not there anymore. The trouble is, some people do not really see that all this stability that was under the, the Mubarak regime was, first of all, it was not fair, it was not sustainable, and it was not actually stable, because it was all on personal relationships and, and, and this impunitive culture. And, and just to unpack the word impunitive culture and, 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 and see what it means, it means that it was not a rights-based approach to government. Not everyone is equal and not everyone is ruled by law, but by ruled by very personal uh, relations based on interests. So, for example, businessmen in Egypt, when they invested their money, they invested it based on their relationships with the government, knowing that at any point they have broken the law, but they are forgiven for that because of their good relations, not because they have a clear, uh, consistent laws that grants them the environment to operate freely and just respect that rule of law and and make profit based on that and, and, and operate in this healthy environment. There was always this uh, a law case or a violation looming ev on, on top of everyone's head so that the government can use any time when they are not happy with the performance of that businessman or this sector or, or whoever is, is, not in, is not favored by the regime. So one of the problems that we've been suffering from in, in Egypt is that we don't have a functional judicial system. I mean, and by, fun by functional judicial system, I don't mean that we don't just have an independent judiciary system, because not every lawsuit in Egypt is, is politically motivated or, or highly dependent on, the, on the, the political issues in the country but also there is a dysfunctionality on the processing of law cases. So people do not have faith that they will get their rights by law. And this is how we see this manifested in every clash and every crisis that we've seen in Egypt since the revolution. I mean, we've seen sectarian rifts, we've seen clashes that people labeled as class wars. And when we look at the, 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 the roots of these issues, we see that everybody was trying to take their rights by violence or by, by attack because they don't have faith or they were not used to ha having this like the judicial system that they fall back into and have the faith and trust that they were going to get their rights back. So everyone is just like having their own way in, in trying to claim their, their grounds, if, if we may put it this way.
the recently appointed cabinet came as a big disappointment for for most Egyptians, and I can say that safely, um, because I mean we can see the political forces in Egypt can be seen broadly, mainly well, to three political forces. We can see the the military, and then we see the Muslim Brotherhood as a majority, or the Islamists in general, and then we see the revolutionary. Before the formation of the community, uh, before even the, the presidential elections, uh, people had faith that the one who would be siding with the revolution would be the Islamists or the Muslim Brotherhood. Because of the, the history of how they were oppressed and how they were part of the revolution and were part of the uprising against the old regime. They were also part of the people who stood against the, the appointment of uh, Prime Minister Ganzuri, who was who, who was seen as a holdover from the Mubarak regime. Now, President Morsi comes and give an honorary medal to, to, uh, to Pr Prime Minister Ganzuri and appoint him as one of his consultants. I mean, this was like an insult to everyone in Egypt. I mean, and it's not just Ganzuri, but also everyone else in, in the cabinet. Most of the people of the the main uh, ministries were the deputies of the ex-ministry ministers uh, in the past regime or even in the transitional period, while the newly formed ministries, like the the, the ministry of youth or or other newly formed ministries, were taken by the uh, Freedom and Justice Party. So nothing much has changed except that new additions to what we can say complementary ministries that all overall that does not change much on, on how the government is, is, is being formed and how, how it is going to change the way things are happening. Why is that the case? It's because, first of all, yes, the Muslim Brotherhood were the only organized political force in the country, but they have never governed before. They don't know the, 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 the loopholes and the insides of how the, the government has been functioning with, we have over six million civil servants and that has been there for, for years and years and years. It's, it's so difficult to dismantle all this and start from, from scratch. And at the same time, it is very hard also to bring someone on top and, and change everything. So I think they took it very safely and they wanted to please the uh, Supreme Council of Armed Forces and help them, like, because they understood that this is also a, a significant political force in, in, in the country, and they wanted from day one to preserve their privileges. So they kept everything basically in, in place and came on top of it. Will this be sustainable? No, because at the end of the day, this will not solve the, all, the, all the problems that we've been talking about in Egypt, where again, talking about the economy, the security, the basic services and needs of of the people of Egypt that have been deteriorating and there are no indications that are go there are going to be better or there are no conditions that tells you that in the near future at least these problems will be solved.